what inspired you to get into acting? What matters is the story and how you craft it. You've answered a lot of the questions already with that one answer. So that's why. <laughs> I mean, if, you're, if your name is not known, I mean, if you're Christopher Nolan, you come with a script, everyone wants to invest. But when you're a uh, you know, nobody film director or first time film director, uh -huh. you need a little bit more than that. Listen, sir. Those nightmares you're having, they ain't going away. You need to do something about it. I don't know if it's the right time for me to leave. You gotta trust me here. Morocco's beautiful. In Morocco, we have found something incredible, and we have been granted access to excavate. We have to be careful. We are very close to the border. No! Don't move! Please don't shoot! Please! Hands up! Please don't! Brad, Kate has been abducted. She's in Algeria. They were taken to be beheaded. The gentleman that we are dealing with is crazy. Yalla! I need to get into Algeria. You're out of your mind. Keep your eyes open, your mind shut. Bring our Kate home. I'm Captain Brad Paxton. Kate is my wife. subscribe to us on YouTube and follow us on your favourite podcasting platform. Thank you. Hi there, welcome to Film Forums. My name is Aisha Jbiri and I have with me a special guest today. Would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Isam Hazi. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Can you tell us about your background and how you got into filmmaking? My background, I've started 15 years ago as a, as a PA and then climbed the stairs a little bit as a second AD, then first AD. I worked in uh, in Morocco mainly on international feature films and TV commercials. Mm -hmm. And uh, after doing you know many productions as an AD, I decided to jump on the production side and be a line producer. And after line producing and production servicing uh, many movies and TV show and TV commercials in Morocco, I decided to create my own projects. I decided to to make the big move and go to LA, and uh, and you know create my own projects. Because I've, I've felt, I always felt myself a little bit uh, creative, so I, you know, I, I created, I wrote some short films in Morocco back in the time. So I, you know, I felt that I wanted to tell more stories, and uh, yeah, and here I am. Fantastic. So you were talking about line production there. Can you maybe tell us a little bit more about what that involves? Because I think it's often quite a misunderstood role, you know, in, in indie films and things like that. It's crucial. Can you tell us well, a bit more about what you did during those kind of jobs? Yeah, of course. I mean, basically, line producing is a step beyond the producer. And uh, we we manage the budget. We read the script. We take care of, you know, budgeting everything what's in the script. And uh, once on set, once in the preparation and on set, we make sure that everyone we budgeted is there and that we don't go over budget. <laughs> It's, main, it's it's a little bit beyond of production managing and it's between the production managing and, and the producing. Mm -hmm. Basically, we make sure that the movie happens with the money we have. Fantastic. Well, I guess that must have been really important when you came to make your own film. Handling a budget is obviously a really big deal for, uh, you know, for a new producer or director. Um, do you think that that really strengthened your position in terms of making your first film? Listen, I've been I've been managing you know budgets before, so that part was quite easy. The the most most complicated thing was uh, to raise that money because it's the first time I raise money to to make a movie. Because in the other times, uh, you know, you get a phone call from a producer say, "Hey, I love what you do. Uh, we want to shoot in Morocco. We have this kind of amount of money." Uh, can you make the shoot happen and say, yeah, I mean, it's very easy when you have the money already. The most complicated part is to go and, you know, convince investors, convince uh, distributors, convince a lot of bunch of people to give you uh, enough money to make your movie happen. Yeah. So how did you do that? I think you're absolutely right. It's obviously like the, you know, it's the mystical unicorn to indie filmmakers is how to get a budget, I think, uh, initially. So how did you go about it? What was your plan in terms of approaching people and, and how you met people? Well, the plan was in the beginning, in the beginning, it seems kind of simple. You say, OK, I'm going to contact those people. I'm going to send them the script and I'm going to tell them who I want as an actor. And probably they will love the script and will follow. But we have been doing this for quite a long. I mean, the process of going after people was quite long because most of the time either they don't like the script or uh, the script was not ready. And we, you know, we 
script have been in the writing process for quite a long time. And uh, at the end of the day, you know, I had everyone, when people were starting to become interested, uh, they asked me to come with a package, means they, they wanted some actor attached. You know, you cannot just come and invest on a movie based on the script, even if the script is really good. I mean, if, you're, if your name is not known, I mean, if you're Christopher Nolan, you come with a script, everyone wants to invest. But when you're uh, you know, nobody film director or first time film director, uh -huh. you need a little bit more than that. So the approach was, you know, quite personal. So I've, I've invested everything that I had. I mean, I've been working for 15 years and uh, all my saving, I put them in the, in the movie to, uh, to, to try to attach a, a first actor. And then when we, I was in the process of, of having an actor, I showed the email to my investors and everything. So I told them, okay, we, we trust me, we're having this kind of people, actors. And, uh, and then, you know, people started to become enthusiasts and, uh, so I raised some funds privately, mainly, and mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you know I got Voltage Pictures attached when they uh, when they read the script and you know so that I could have some interesting names, and they took care of uh, of the international sales. So they you know they were selling the movie, pre-selling the movie almost everywhere, and that gave confidence to my investors because they knew that we will be selling this kind of amount of money. That means they will get their money back. It, it was a lot of. It was a very difficult uh, financing uh, structure, and uh, I mean, it was it was a little bit of financing nightmare as a as a filmmaker. But at the end, uh, we've made it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, the fact that you put your own money in as well, I think, kind of adds a bit more confidence to if you're willing to take that risk. Um, so you talked a lot about, you know, working in Morocco. My father is actually from Tunisia, um, not too far from me. Um, so how was it in terms of filming there and the difference between that and making the move to LA? Listen, uh, I've been working with a lot of productions uh, in Morocco. I've done the Werner Herzog Queen of the Desert with Nicole Kidman. I've done uh, you know a lot of other movies. So shooting in Morocco is, I mean, I grew up in Morocco. I'm Moroccan and uh, I've been doing this my entire life. So when I wrote the script, I was, you know, writing the scenes knowing that I'm going to shoot them in Morocco. So that's, that was actually the easiest part. Uh, in the movie, we have around 25% or 30% 30, 30 of the movie happening in L, in uh, New York and Washington. Uh, we shot New York and Washington in Morocco, some of it in studios and some of it in, uh, you know, we, we in, in houses that exist in Casablanca, for example. So the only thing we shot in America is the wide shots, if the drone shots and, the, you know, the, the establishing shots. Everything else was shot in Morocco because if we had to come in LA in in uh, New York and shoot the movie in New York, it's it's a different budget. But, you know, it's like it's an independent movie. We had the very very little money to make it happen, uh, so we have to we had to uh, we have to check what's the, the the most effective solutions and the most effective situations were to shoot the movie. Yeah, I mean Morocco is a beautiful place to shoot anything. Anyway, I think it's it's a, the reason that it's so popular for so many big blockbusters as well for shooting on location. Um, it's definitely a very beautiful country, um, as is Tunisia and the whole of North Africa, in my opinion. Definitely, I've shot in Tunisia for also. It's it's beautiful. I love the Tunisian people. Okay, cool. I'll, I mean, I'll take that. <laughs> um, yeah, I I love North Africa. In terms of um, your story and your script development what was your approach to that uh so the script i had the idea to write a script actually i have a friend a high school friend of mine who lost his sister in a terrorist attack in morocco she was a very uh, not in morocco i'm sorry in burkina faso in uh, africa she was she was a photographer and she had a mission assigned by uh Amnesty International. So she was just there at the lobby having a beer with the crew. And uh, all of a sudden, there is this group of people who came in and start mm -hmm. to shoot everyone. And uh, when this happened, I mean, it, it shocked me a little bit because, you you know, you don't used to see your friends killed by terrorists uh, yeah. in our part of the world. 
And I decided to write a story, uh, to write a movie and explaining, you know, it's like a little bit making the difference between uh, Islamist and Islam and show that Muslims are not terrorists. And yeah. also, you know, make it in a must, you know, in a, in a great way where, you know, ab around a love story, ab around some action and explain a little bit to the international audience that, you know, uh, we could be from this area, but we're not those people. We could be religious, but we're not those people. And and at the end, you know, um, it was quite um, uh political you know it's mm -hmm. i've been talking about the political aspect of uh, the area the, the problem between morocco and algeria the sahara the you know uh, cia go us government and you know not it's not everyone that uh, what we think it is yeah no i i completely agree i think it's a very serious issue that you're you know you're bringing to life in a cinematic way, but it is still very real in the sense that, you know, those things are happening in North Africa now. It was less common before. I mean, I, I remember before the, the Tunisian revolution, for example, there was never any mention or, or even news of that type of thing happening. And then obviously, you know, those shootouts happened in Tunisia as well. Um, and I, I visited not long after the revolution, and I got caught in like the crossfire between the military and some rebels or whatever. Yeah. Um, and it was actually in like central Tunis, you know, you wouldn't expect that, you know, in, in such a busy place. But there was tear gas bombs and shooting and everything. And I basically just ran into a, a taxi phone and just took cover. Um, but it was really scary because I'd never seen that side of, uh, of oh, Tunisia yeah. before, you know. Um, so I'm glad that there are more films coming out that are kind of bringing that to light, you know, the, the political aspects that are obviously having a huge impact in the area. Well, you know what, the, the, what I explain also is that those people, most of the time, they don't come from our region, you know, all those terrorists, they come from Europe, they come from France, from Belgium. Uh, if you've seen what happened in France the last uh, 10 years, this is what, you know, they had... I'm gonna say a thick number, but it's all around 50% of what happened in the world, just in Europe, just in France and uh, and Belgium. Yeah. So in, in my movie, those people speak French. So I wanna show that they are not from our part of the world. They come mm -hmm. from, uh, I don't know where, because they are financed, but I don't know who. And, uh, you know, and they don't know anything about the religion or anything else. They don't even speak Arabic. Yeah, so yeah. I really wanted to show this part of, uh, you know, the story. Yeah, no, totally. You're absolutely right. And in terms of the action and things, obviously, that was very well done. Can you talk to us a little bit about how you planned that out? Because obviously that's quite, you know, every every set of stunts can have dangers and things like that. So how did you handle those types of risks just from a production point of view? Listen, we had, uh, you know, we were fortunate to have two uh, experienced fight coordinator and stunt coordinator. So the stunt coordinator, I've been working with him for the past 10 years in, in a lot of productions. And uh, he knew exactly what he was doing, you know, the cherry picker, the cables, the crew, all those people for this jumping and everything. And the fight coordinator, is uh, he's been training a lot of people in Krav Maga, and he's uh, he knew he knew his choreography. So so I had the I had the chance to have the actors two weeks before the shoot, just to train. And we had the location also ready and set up. So we you know we had this the ambulation where you see the actors go in uh, from this point of the story, get the woman from there and go out. I mean because in, in the normal world, if you have just to cross and go from point A to point B, it's it's thirty seconds. But we needed to to have a lot of action and to show a lot of uh, movement when they get in, when uh, when they get shot at, when uh, you know. And we had to create a real choreography to to make that you know spectacular and uh, with the with the little, with little money we had at the time. <laughs> so uh, you were talking about you know it, it being a, a smaller budget. Um, what were the ways that you made your money go further? Because again, I think that's something that indie filmmakers really struggle with, is how to really stretch out their money. You mentioned one thing being that it was cheaper for you to film on location in Morocco than it was for you to film in the US. 
were there any other uh, decisions that you took in order to save the, so, or to stretch the budget further? Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, you know, when you start as a first time director, you know, to be honest with you, we we first were thinking to make it with, uh, you know, smaller actors. Mm-hmm. But once you get once you get an actor, you're so happy, you're so enthusiastic, and the casting director and the, the agent propose other actors and say, oh, wow, I cannot not have this one. If, if he wants to work with me, I want to work with him. And then yeah. actually what, what we did, it was the opposite. So we were going with a smaller budget, but when you have Andy Garcia, you cannot say no. Uh, and and you, you just say okay I'm 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 gonna manage to you know find the find the money somewhere and then you go to your friends and and investors and everyone and say I have Andy Garcia and you know this is the budget and we can make it back very easily so so people are enthusiastic and, and invest but the mm-hmm. production part the production part we had to compact everything so we can be able to have these actors you know what I mean because yeah. because. I would have loved to spend more in production and have more time to shoot and have you know more explosions, more gunshots, more chase. But unfortunately, we had you know a very small amount of money to make all that happen. So we had to compact the shoot. We had two camera all the times. Uh, we were shooting almost two units, uh, all the t- two cameras all the times. So instead of shooting, for example, for ten on ten weeks, we shot on five weeks only. Uh, we are, what else we did? I mean, you know, all we, I used some locations from my friend's houses. Uh, the, I mean, the desert, when you go to the desert, it's the desert. So we shot a lot in the desert. We had to build, I mean, we did some building. We built some, like, for example, the boxing scene. We built all the boxing stage uh, uh, on a stage. And uh, as, as a producer, that was actually the easiest part because I knew how to compact and make everything uh, cost efficient. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's the value of having that like production experience and knowing already having all of those connections in place so that you can um, stretch your budget further and those little tricks and things like that that you can exactly. do to make your money really work for you, you know. Um, and I think a lot of first time directors or even first time producers, if they don't have that experience of handling a budget and making a business plan, for their film, then they might struggle. They might, you know, get to post-production, for example, and realize that they don't have any money for the rest exactly. of it. Exactly. You know? Yeah, definitely. So, um, and also, of- the, also the experience of being, uh, you know, a former first assistant director was really helpful because I could compact the the schedule and, you know, I, I knew that this scene will need only three hours and this one need maybe two days. So... I was really confident that I would finish the movie in five weeks with uh, with two cameras. Yeah. So did you go to film school or did you just, did you come up entirely from experience? To be honest with you, I've done a film school in Canada uh, when I was 21. You know, it was just a year and a half. Uh, you know, we knew, the, we learned the basics. But to be honest, I felt that my film school was the first movie I worked on when I was a trainee. Your experience as a first AD also helped to prepare you for this filmmaking. Journey. Definitely, yeah, definitely. I mean, being a first AD, when you when you work as a first AD, you know every aspect of a film set. You know the schedule. You know how to manage the actors. You know, I mean, you know almost everything on set. I mean, mm-hmm. so it was definitely helpful uh, to uh, I mean to to compact the movie and be able to shoot it in five weeks. That for one, and also. To uh, to do a proper schedule and proper uh, you know breakdown, mm-hmm. so you 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 use only what you need and you there is no spend of money on anything that we don't really need. Yeah, and when you were talking about your cast as well, obviously you were very happy and proud of the cast that you managed to get. Totally understand, amazing cast in this one. Um, how did you go about finding them? Did you contact casting directors yourself? Um, and have them take care of it, or did you deal with the agents directly? No, I I contacted the cast. I've been introduced to a casting directors by uh, by a dear friend of mine, and uh, so casting director was Nancy Foy, and Nancy was you know when I met her the first time, it was a year before we really started the process of getting the actors. So I met her the first time. I sent her the uh, the script, and she was not really. Uh, she liked the story, but she didn't feel that the script could go uh, with the actors I wanted. 
So at a certain point, you know, I, I was working on the script again and I contacted her between eight months or I think a year later and I sent her the script and she, she really enjoyed reading it. She, she felt the difference and, uh, and the, you know, and she felt that we, we, uh, we arrived to this level that she wanted uh, from a script. And then, you know, we, we've been talking almost the whole year and I was telling her about my projects and about, uh, you know, the, my vision to the movie and everything. And, uh, and at the end, she really believed that we could, we could get the, some, some of the good actors I wanted. And uh, she, take, she took care of the process of contacting the agent. I mean, she's really well known. She knows the agents, you know, everyone. And she's almost backed, my, uh, backed me in front of them because nobody knew me at the time. You see, who is Hisham? What has he done before? Uh, he was a line producer in Morocco, but he never produced. Would he be able to uh, to do all the process with the actors from uh, from the signature to the delivery? And uh, and she she really backed me up with uh, with the agent. So she was really helpful in the process. Yeah, it's really important to make those strong connections early on. I feel. Um, Definitely. So finally. Um, in terms of distribution, because obviously now your film is going to be available. So first of all, you can tell us where people can see it and when they can see it, for example, in the different regions, if, if you know those. Um, and also, how did you go about actually getting the distribution? Did you have a sales agent? Yeah, so that was also one of the biggest challenge is to uh, to go to this sales agent or distributors who tell them hey uh, you don't know me but i have something nice and i'm sure i can make it look nice uh, because you know a lot of people contact you even me as a producer i get contacted with a lot of people say hey we have this great project and you start to read the two first pages and you know it's not a great project so you have to feel you have to filter i mean the, somebody somebody has to filter the projects like the agents do with the actors because if we have to contact every actor and say, hey, I have this project. He will get million, millions of scripts in one day. So, mm -hmm. so I went to the, I, I contacted Voltage Pictures to uh, to produce or co-produce or sell my movie in the beginning, but the script was not that good at that time. And uh, when I really felt that the script was in a good position, and I was going to make offers to the actors, and you know, we had the good feedbacks from the actors. Uh, so they 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 got attached to the project, and uh, to be honest, they are the one who uh, who did everything, like sailing internationally, contacting Saban for uh, the U.S. distribution. I mean, they've been doing a great job, and uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think that's necessary for a uh, yeah, because as a filmmaker, you cannot produce, write, <laughs> direct, and do everything and still look at the distributors. If, if you're nobody, I mean, or first time director, they will not take you seriously. So you really need to go to someone who knows what he's doing and convince him and let him go uh, manage the rest of uh, the process, uh, distribution process, which is the most important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think that the biggest, one of the biggest areas anyway that filmmakers can fall down after the post-production is distribution and marketing you put so much effort, blood, sweat and tears into making a film. And then if you don't invest in those areas and let someone take care of it that knows what they're doing, then your film doesn't really get seen, you know? So I think it's really important that you took that step to make sure that you connected with the right people who could handle that for you. Um, I think that's definitely, for me anyway, it's one of the saddest things when you're involved, you know, in, in independent film and then, it, you don't see it come out properly, if you know what I mean. So I'm always yeah, so definitely. I mean, the point is not to show it to your family and post it on Facebook. The point is to, uh, you know, the point is to make it actually released and distribute as wide as possible. And yeah. only a distributor can do that. Yeah. So, what type of distribution were you able to get for this film? Listen, I think we have. Uh, we're almost about to sign with every country. We have. I mean, it's going to be distributed in Russia. Uh, I just saw the trailer in Russian language. It was very funny because I saw for the first time my 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 actors talking with a, in another language, and uh, I think we're going pretty uh, wild. I mean, it's going to be worldwide. We have the U.S. distribution, uh, the the U.S. release on January 8th in selected theaters and uh, January 12th on the uh, VODs and a lot of platforms, Apple, uh, Amazon, I mean, ev everywhere, almost everywhere. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I don't have the dates in for, for Europe, for the Europe release, but I guess it's going to be in spring, early in spring. 
Okay. Uh, but like for, I mean, there is, you know, we sold the rights to a lot of countries and they, they manage their own dates. I don't have all the information, but I, but it sure is going to be between now and, uh, and the spring. Okay. Fantastic. Well, well done on your film. It's obviously a great success and we look forward to it coming out and we will be promoting you. Um, if you're doing anything else as well, you can always hit us up and let us know. We're always happy to continue to promote anyone who's involved in the show. We really appreciate your time and coming on. Um, so thank you very much for that. Thank you for I'm having just... me. Thanks for, thanks for your interest. Please subscribe to us on YouTube and follow us on your favourite podcasting platform. Thank you.